Ooh, today is the premiere of my first ever documentary series, The Athens Urbanist, which is a six episode series that takes a deep cultural look into the city of Athens. Most people cover Athens and its main tourist sites. Most people cover the main ancient history. But rarely do they go into the modern history of Athens that is a series of twists and turns and it is really mind-blowing. Uh, I was blown away as I was filming this documentary series for two weeks in some of the hottest weather ever in Athens. Right now I'm listening to the score of the Athens Urbanist, which is an original score made by Lefteris Boulanis. I'll tell you a little bit more about him soon, but I'm playing it right now on my TV. The Athenian Urbanism. It's available also on YouTube that you can watch it at your discretion. But I have my popcorn ready and I am excited to enjoy the Athens Urbanist and to share it with all of you. You know, this is truly a labor of love. I always wanted to make television. Uh, the main reason for that is, is that there are certain stories you can tell on live video. Awesome, because live video is very real, in, in real time. There's no cuts, no edits. It's pretty authentic type of uh, medium. Short videos are awesome because you get a, a blast of history, and I love doing that. Uh, I love giving people a roller coaster ride of history in three minutes or less. And then you got vlogs. Vlogs are vlogs are fun. You know, they they're like edited. They uh, tell you a story through a place, uh, through an adventure. But I wanted to make something bigger, something that has a, a larger scope, that doesn't just tell you the story of a cool adventure I went on, or just a, um, a one specific story from history. I want to tell you that something that over encompasses various locations, various people and interviews, uh, various landmarks and various um, times throughout history and give you a story that really immerses you into um, a specific city and how wonderful that city is. So welcome, welcome everyone. Nice to see you here. Uh, let me know where you're watching from. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat. We have a super chat from Ariel, my executive producer. <laughs> Not in this project, but uh, he has, uh, it's my dad who's tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, welcome, Doreen. Here's a little bit of the trailer. Oh. It's like Athens and people of Athens never been to psychotherapy, let's say. But I got the comment so many times that Athens is ugly, but yet beautiful. Yes. There are many different corners of beauty in Athens because if you look at Athens from above, let's be honest, it's not a beautiful city. It's a concrete monster. It's so chaotic that it's so inviting to create your own patterns in it and exist in your own rhythm. Athens, you have these things in parts, but then here we are. I came to Greece taking a risk. I have a limited budget, little to no plans, and no idea whether anyone will watch. Join me for an adventure deep into the heart of Athens. Are you ready? Hello, hello. Okay, Google, pause. That was the trailer for what you're about to experience. You're about to experience the very first episode. It starts uh, at 7 p.m. Okay, Google. Pause. All right, pausing living room TV. 
Um, the first episode premieres at 7 p.m. Uh, just right after this live stream. And it's six episodes, so they're going to air on a weekly basis uh, for six weeks all the way through April. So I am super hyped. <sighs> All right. Hello, Adam. Says, what a production you made. Thank you so much, Adam. Hello, Susie. Hello, Mika. Hello, um, hello, Oleg. Uh, hello, Daniel. Hello, Gary. If you're tuning in on Facebook or on Twitch, the premiere is going to be specifically on YouTube. It'll be posted tomorrow on Facebook. So the premiere dates, it's going to premiere 7 p.m. every single week for six weeks starting today. Uh, you can tune in live or live for the premiere. I'll be there in the chat live uh, with all of the other fellow urbanists who love to tune in. And uh, there'll be parties every single 7 p.m. all the way through the end. And at the last episode, we're going to have an after party. So after the premiere of the last episode, uh, which is six, six weeks from now, I'll be doing a live stream uh, to, to celebrate. So welcome GG, hello Camilla, hello Bill, nice to see you here. But right now it's like a Q&A, you feel free to ask me anything about making this show. Um, it, it, as I mentioned, it's a labor of love. It took me two weeks to film, but the editing process is the trickiest process. And this, the, this was not a one-man production. I've been a one-man show for most of my career on Urbanist thus far, six years out of seven I pretty much did most of the things on my own never truly in a vacuum but at least when it came to researching uh, writing uh, filming editing everything was done by me uh, including my first documentary that I ever made was uh, the history of New York City fashion so that was uh, New York City a fashion capital and that documentary came out in 2020, and that was another labor of love. And it led to wonderful opportunities, such as making videos for Rise New York, where today I have a mini version of that longer fashion documentary, at eight minutes long, replaying in loop in Rise New York, which is a major tourist attraction in the middle of Times Square. So I did that all on my own, but you know, a little bit more than a year ago, uh, in late 2022, I started collaborating with uh, Maria Edvida Queridu, who's an amazing uh, editor. She had very little experience, but she was a huge fan of Urbanist for many years, uh, basically since the beginning. And I remember bumping into Maria on a live stream when I was wandering the streets of Thessaloniki. And she said hello very quickly. Uh, and then later on, we met up for coffee and we connected immediately, creatively speaking. And, and I knew that I wanted to work with her somehow. So zoom in about a year and a half later. And uh, she answers my call out for a editor. I was looking for editors, someone to help me, especially edit short videos because I was starting to get a lot of views in short videos and I wanted to capitalize on the attention that I was getting on these uh, TikToks, Reels, YouTube Shorts. And Maria uh, came with only two videos. One of them was uh, like a, a, birth, a video for the birthday of a friend, kind of celebrating their friendship. And she chose such a great song and it was so beautifully edited. I was blown away and I, and I told her, hey, we're going to start working together. So we started working together. Many months later, 2023, um, she tells me that she is no longer working uh, for her full-time job because she loves video editing so much she wants to pursue it full-time. And at that moment, I knew I had to do something. I had to take advantage of this because... Secretly, I wanted to hire her for more, but I knew she was working full-time for another job. She was an, she's an architect. And I decided, no, I got to take advantage right now. So I said, hey, uh, are you free for two weeks in the summer? Let's film a documentary series. And the easiest place that we could think of is Athens. She's from Greece, so she can stay there uh, 
fairly easily, and um, and I already had a few connections in Athens, so that was the first location. And Athens was a city that fascinated me. So working with Maria, she came on as my videographer and editor. And um, Athens, the reason I think it's interesting is because when I was trying to search documentaries of Athens on YouTube, everything available was basically ancient history. The Golden Age of Athens, which is the Parthenon and the, I mean, sorry, yeah, the, the Parthenon and the Agora and uh, the Spartans, etc., etc. Or your typical YouTube travel videos, which mostly cover the ancient sites, the Parthenon, the Acropolis, and Plaka and Monasteraki, which are like the main sites in Athens. It's like in New York, most of the New York is, is a bit different. There's way more documentaries about New York. But there was barely anything about Athens aside from the ancient history. And I, and I remember going to Athens twice before. One time on Urbanist, where I was live streaming for a week, for two weeks, back in 2021, that Athens had way more to offer. It was not merely a city for its ancient sites. It was a, a very vibrant, electric city that looked chaotically planned, because it was, and had a mishmash of different influences from, from different circumstances throughout history. And it's also uh, a city that went through tough times in the 1800s with Ottoman occupation and then World War I and World War II as well and then later on in the financial crisis in the early 2000s. So this city had so much because when I visited in 2015 for the first time, I went there for work. This was before I was making actual uh, videos and it was just merely as a tourist and I remember um, kind of being stunned at the amount of graffiti everywhere. The city looked rather run down. Uh, there was not that much tourism. And it was because it got a bad rap due to all the civil unrest that was happening. And then I go later in 2021 for Urbanist. And the city ha got way better. Uh, less graffiti, even though they're still filled with graffiti. Um, the streets felt safer. There was a lot more uh, people outside drinking. Tourism uh, started coming back up right after the pandemic. And I knew that this, there was something special about this city. How it was able to go through so many ups and downs through more than 2,000 years. And I couldn't find a documentary about anything in the past 100 years. So I decided to take upon that. Well... Let me clarify, English language documentary, because the Greeks have made plenty of documentaries in Greek language, speci specifically Greek TV. So I couldn't find any English language documentaries about this subject. And, um, and it was wonderful because the very idea of Urbanist is that it's a deep cultural look into cities. It's history, architecture, and food, uh, and a few other aspects along with that. But that is the gist of Urbanist. And I've, I've, I was always a fan of Anthony Bourdain, uh, because I started watching him since I was like little. I think I was like 11 years old, maybe a bit younger than that, uh, when I first saw Anthony Bourdain. And I was stunned at how this guy was able to show you a city unlike any other travel show at the time because he first it was his personality he just was kind of a no-nonsense kind of guy he was a kind of guy who's going to show you the real side of the city quote unquote and also he dug a little bit deeper into the politics of the country especially via food 
was a way to express what was happening politically. But he will only go to a city for 40 minutes, you know, because most of his episodes are about 40 minutes long. And then I thought to myself, this is awesome. However, right after him, may he rest in peace, almost everything is about food. Netflix, food. Amazon Prime, food. TV, food. Everything is food, 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 food. I'm, I'm a bit tired. I think people long, learned the wrong lesson from Anthony Bourdain. They thought, oh, Anthony Bourdain showed food. Now let's all show food. I think they long, learned the wrong lesson. Food, food is interesting. Food is fascinating. But there's more to a city than just food. Because at the end of it, you know, food is something we all share together, but... Um, I think there's way more interesting stories that goes beyond, at least in Athens, your Slovaki or your pita or your baklava. There's way more. And I think Anthony Bourdain was touching upon those topics, but he only did it for 40 minutes. And I knew there was way more. He didn't even go into architecture most of the time, which is understandable because that was not the nature of his show. But I knew there was something more. I knew there was more to show with the city. So in the beginning when I started Urbanist, I wanted to uh, basically just cover a city as in depth as I can for a certain amount of time. The first idea was through a magazine like Kinfolk uh, or Drift Magazine, which is a series of coffee ma magazines I have here. I, I thought that was like the first idea, but then it evolved into a TV show to dedicate each season for a particular city to go as deep as possible into that city. There's so there's many cities where this there's a lot of documentaries already that have covered it in depth, but not in the combination that I tend to prefer, and I think people could really learn a lot from. They're excited outside. Uh, for the series. So this is why this show is about going de as deep as we can into learning about city beyond the shiny facade of the tourist areas or the very commonly known foods to go deeper, to learn about the architecture, to learn about how the architecture came about the urban style, the urban uh, design, the urban planning, to learn about the, the modern history that most people don't know. People talk about the politics. You know, I, I'm not covering politics in my documentary series. I don't want to cover politics. But there's a good reason why certain politics have come about. Why? Why? So... Another inspiration for me was Vice, when they used to still be alive. Vice, may they rest in peace. It was a media company, has recently kind of gone under. Uh, but during the heyday of the early 2010s, they were making really gritty documentaries about the pol political situations of places around the world. But it was all about the politics. They didn't tell you too much about the historical context of what got a city like Athens to descend into chaos with its riots and fires and, and, uh, and crime for a while. And I find that particular aspect a bit more interesting than what's happening current day. A lot of people are covering the current politics. So a lot of people don't cover how a city gets to the place it is now. So that's what the Urbanist series is about. The first season is the Athens Urbanist. I already shot the second season, which is the Edinburgh Urbanist uh, with Maria. And uh, that will be coming around mid-summer. Uh, but depending on how these two seasons do uh, this, of documentary series, who knows? Uh, maybe I, I'll do more because... If it, if it proves to be popular on YouTube, I'll do more directly on YouTube. Or maybe I'll have the opportunity to do it with a TV or streaming company. All right. So that was 
the, the little backstory of it. Documentary filmmaking is a compelling new art form. Compelling art form, yes, uh, Nicole, I agree. Bourdain showed the gritty part of cities. He did. Mildred says, totally agree. Athens is my most favorite city. Athens is my favorite city, yeah. It's one of my favorite cities, so I'm glad other people agree. I, there's, there's quite a few people out there that they go to Athens not expecting much, and they end up just falling in love with it. Hey, Benji says, you have really grown as a presenter. I think you're so ready for that sweet BBC gig. Yeah, I really admire BBC. Um, you know, I don't admire everything that they do, but I really do admire their, their epic history series that they do. Janet, hello. Janet says, good afternoon. Uh, finally, it's done. So happy uh, you're presenting it. Yes. Doreen says, you're a storyteller just like Anthony was. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, he was cool and special guy. I miss him, says Christos. Yeah. Mildred says, totally agree, Ariel. Hey. Uh, Adriana says, was this a public television? No, my fashion documentary is on YouTube. Search New York City Fashion Urbanist. You'll find it. And then this documentary will also be on my YouTube, uh, premiering just after this live stream. Rafael says, Ariel's looking elegant today. How is Athens different from Rome, asks Adam. Athens is very different from Rome. Athens was not a big city for most of its history. Uh, Athens grew to become a very powerful city in the Golden Age, which was around 450 BC, and then kind of became tiny. Uh, only about 2,000 people were living in Athens at some point uh, prior to Turkish occupation. Uh, Athens only started growing as we know it uh, because the installed the king who was installed, King Otto I, this loved Athens. And since he was installed in the 1800s, after uh, Greece declared independence from the Ottomans, Athens uh, went from a tiny little kind of backward, uh, not backwards, but a city that kind of was forgotten about, and it grew immensely fast. Rome, the story of Rome is different. Athens is bigger than Rome in terms of its metropolitan area, but um, it's only very recent. And why? You'll learn why. I can't wait for Ariel's next Europe trip. There's so much fun. Hey, what lessons do you learn from your first documentary series? Ooh. Uh, Nicole, that's a great question. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, I, I felt like I knew the story before starting. I felt like I needed to write the story, in essence, kind of mold it before starting the series. And as I was starting to chat with uh, people... Uh, in Athens, more than 25 people, I end up realizing how the story just went in a very different direction that I did not anticipate. So, I've learned to surrender myself to the story. And I've mentioned this in live streams, surrender myself to the city because by surrendering the real story will come to you as me the filmmaker it will come uh, rather than me trying to seek it out it will come to me um, and that's why I learned I learned I learned that how was Barcelona while you were there Adam feel free to ask me any questions about Athens uh, but in short Barcelona was awesome Feel free to check out my other um, 
live streams in Barcelona. Hello, Joshua. Nice to see you here. Hello, Inspired. Okay. Hello, Marit. Athens uh, rose like a phoenix from the dark corners of history, says Maurice. Indeed it did. Levi, Le Le Levi says, have you always been interested in exploring other cultures and learning history? What do you think drew you to this kind of content? Um, it's kind of inexplicable, um, Levi. I think the very origin point of me learning about history I can tell you three specific instances. One was the show Richard Scarry's Weird Weird World, I think was the name of the show on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon, unfortunately, is going through, through some controversy, but it wasn't one of the shows with uh, live, action, live action actors. It was an animated show on the, like, the preschool section of Nickelodeon when it aired when it was early in the day. And um, this, this was based on a series of books, but this show uh, basically used uh, anthropomorphic animals, uh, cartoons, to, show, to teach kids about different parts of history. And I remember I was so enthralled into learning history through this cartoon. Uh, and I found that to be the more interesting show I would watch as a little kid. And then... Followed, followed by other shows like Hysteria, which was more of a comedic version of history. And other, show, other kids' shows that really showed history, that really got me hooked as a little kid. And I remember just loving how these kids' shows would just kind of recreate uh, history uh, in that cartoony style. And uh, make it funny, make it relatable, make it easy to understand. And I was hooked. The second thing was... One of the very first video games that I really started really being utterly obsessed with was city building games. SimCity, SimCity 3000 was the first one I started playing. Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2, Railroad Tycoon, uh, Sim Golf. I was obsessed with city building games and also real time strategy games where you had to build your like base. Warcraft 3, Rise of Nations, Age of Empires. I was obsessed with these games. I loved building. Uh, and I can't tell you why. It just it was just the interest that popped up when I was like nine years old. Uh, really before I can really logically tell you how I got into it. And uh, I remember just even before then, I was uh, obsessed with building stuff on my own. I had Legos, I had Jenga blocks, I had Lincoln Logs, and I would just build stuff uh, on my own. And... Um, I got hooked, and I think the third, the third reason is when I first started encountering the internet, which started really becoming easy to access and very popular by, by that era when I was like nine years old or so, I started really going deep and searching um, everything I can about countries. I started learning uh, I went to like the CIA had their own website with a database of all countries. Lonely Planet had a database. And this was like pre-Wikipedia times. So you had to go to these specific websites that had all this information about the, the country, the population, the main city, uh, where, the, where they're located, what was the main industries. And I was obsessed. I was obsessed with learning everything I could about countries and I was tasked in seventh grade to do this project about a specific country uh, the country I was tasked with was with Spain and uh, my teacher at the time said oh yeah if you want to find more information about your country uh, just call up the embassy and ask them to send you some brochures about the country and remember this is pre-wikipedia times so to find information, yeah, you could go online, but as like by that time, an eleven-year-old kid, twelve-year-old kid, uh, online, it wasn't really the only resource you should do. It was it, it was easier to try to find something printed, like a book, or in this case, a brochure. 
So I called up the embassy, the Spanish embassy, asked for the brochure. They sent me this beautiful big brochure uh, and my eyes opened wide. I was like, whoa, I can get free like information about these countries. So I just started calling all these embassies, Spain, France, Italy, uh, Japan, uh, China, <laughs> Vietnam, all these random countries, Germany, uh, Sweden, Finland. Uh, and I started just capturing, I started gathering a huge stack of massive brochures from countries all around the world. So um, those are, the, I think, the three elements that drew me to what I'm doing today. Were you also interested in road atlases? Yes, uh, Adam, great question. Yeah, I was really interested in maps, uh, specifically planning trips. I, I, I had this kind of laminated map of the U.S. and the world, and uh, I had these erasable markers, and I would just like plan r routes through the U.S. and tell my parents, like, hey, we should go here, we should go there, 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 and it'll take about three months. <laughs> uh, I would do the same thing for global trips. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed maps. I really enjoyed geography, specifically. All right, let me put on some music. Uh, so welcome, everyone. How are you doing? Are you excited for the show? Let me know. Cole says... Civilization is a fun game where you get to build wonders from history. Oh, yeah. I love Civilization as well. I'm obsessed with it. All right. Let's, um, let's put on the Urbanist soundtrack. Hey, Aficio, Aficio says, I'm, I found your 360 Sansu Peace video. I noticed there was a hidden door uh, next to the obelisk. Yeah, I mean, a lot of cool hidden stuff is available in many of these uh, locations. Uh, that's the beauty about exploration. If you can uh, choose, what would you choose to disclose? What city, uh, says Camilla? What what things would you disclose about city? Um, mysteries in cities. Yeah, you know, one thing I would really want to do a like entire documentary on is is uh, the Vatican. Uh, I'm really curious. What's, what's in the Vatican archives? How do the archives look like? Uh, there's, there's very few documentaries that show the, ins, the, the behind the scenes of the Vatican. There's a few, but not too many. I would be very curious. Is there a place in Athens you uh, wanted to explore but couldn't? Um... I wanted to see a lot of the suburbs of Athens. I just did not get the chance to really go there. I didn't have too much reason to go. So I really wanted to see more of the suburbs, but I didn't. Uh, and I think the suburbs, you know, the thing is with Athens, it's not, Athens is a fairly new city. So there really isn't that much, um, that many landmarks in, in, in parts outside of the city center of Athens. Uh, it's not like New York or Paris or London. So, 
so I just didn't get to have a good reason to go out and explore more of Athens. The, the one big landmark that I wish I would have explored was this huge abandoned palace that was built around the 1900s and it's in the northern part of the city and it's completely abandoned and you can walk into it, um, which is very interesting. So uh, Maria and Katarina say hi. So uh, I think they're in the comments right now, but um, everyone knows Maria. Maria is the one who uh, filmed and edited this documentary series. Katerina is who Katerina Kaku was the assistant editor and she did the coloring, the audio, and the illustrations, which are beautiful illustrations. You're gonna see a few of them in the first episode. And um, round of hearts to her. And round of hearts to Lefteris Wulanis. Lefteris Wulanis is a musician uh, of the band No Clear Mind. No Clear Mind is like a post-rock band. And they're very well known for some random reason in Turkey, even though they're all Greek. Um, and they met each other, I think, in, in the Netherlands. They're very popular in Turkey. Uh, they like fill out huge venues in Turkey for some reason. Uh, but nonetheless, they're, very, they're a very popular band. But this guy uh, in the band uh, scored a movie called Magnetic Fields. And it's this movie without a script that was shot in Greece and also in Athens. And the, the score was so beautiful. Search Magnetic Fields on Spotify. But the score was so beautiful. So kind of, it had this kind of, I love post-rock. Post-rock is kind of cinematic in my opinion. And, um, and it felt kind of like a Western, but in a different way. It, 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 very interesting music, hard to describe. But I remember just listening to it over and over and over and over on loop while filming The Athens Urbanist. And um, through pure happenstance, I ended up reaching out to another very popular mus musician in Athens by the name of Pan Pan. And this guy is a very talented musician, artist as well. And he's very popular nowadays in Athens. And I just spontaneously reached out to him after Maria introduced me to his music. And he said yes uh, for an interview, which was awesome. So uh, when we met up with him, very nice guy. And I asked him, hey, do you happen to know Lefteris Vulanis, uh, this other musician? He was like, yeah, 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 I do. <laughs> and luckily I got him to introduce me to him, to Lefteris. And uh, Lefteris and I hit it off very quickly, very fast. And I commissioned him to make the score for the Athens Urbanist. The, the score appears from episode two through six. So the first episode is not there, but two through six, uh, the score is there and it's so beautiful. I love it. It's called Athenian Urbanism is the name of the score. Daniel says, best dessert you tried in Athens. Oh, that's a good question. All right, everyone. Uh, it's a celebratory day. Uh, shall I have a celebratory drink? Do you want to join me for a celebratory drink as we celebrate the very first episode of The Athens Urbanist? And I'll let you know about the other videos that I also did. Uh, the other music that I also included in the show uh, is a very fascinating story. Inspire Life says, I can't wait to hear it. I'm so excited for the music. So far, what I heard is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Susie says, I'm having a celebratory iced coffee. <laughs> Maurice says, uh, uh, applaud to the entire Urbanist team. Indeed. Yes. What do you think about Athens City Parks? Were they well planned? No. Athens does not have too many city parks. It's, uh, it's very, very little for a city. There's a few tiny little micro squares and parks. Uh, no, Athens is not really well planned, but I think there's beauty in that chaos. And uh, that episode three and four really go deep into exploring that. Mildred says, was waiting for that. All right. Let's do it. First, we gotta get ice. 
ice is the most important part of this drink. Because we have a very important drink from Greece. Let me know if you can guess what it is. What do you think it is? Hey, Ariel, Lorraine, thank you so much for sending stars. Mika, thank you so much. So I got myself some Uzo. Uzo of Polmari. Uzo, Uzo, the national drink of Greece. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, Uzo. Susie Guess Septum. Ooh, Septum beer. If only I could find it here. But no, Greek beers are generally only sold in Greece. I don't think they're easily imported. There we go. Marit says, is this um, Rocky or Uzo? This is Uzo. And Uzo looks clear. But wait, I have ice. Do I put the ice after? I put the ice after. I forgot. Oh my god. You'll you'll learn about this episode too. I took out the ice. I'm gonna put it after. I think that's enough. <laughs> Alright. Now the ice. There we go. And it makes it cloudy. Look at that. That's the beautiful thing about Uzo. And it makes it cloudy. How, many, how much alcohol percentage? Let's see. Hmm, what do you say? 40, 40%, 40%, same as rum or whiskey. So in Greece, they say yamas. Yamas, which means cheers. Yamas directly means your health, health. So, or steli yamas, which means to your health. So yamas. Ah, ooh, oh, Uzo is so good, wow, wow, hmm, ooh, it's so refreshing, you have all this, it has this very refreshing aroma, ah, oh. I think it's made with mastica, which is kind of this kind of very minty plant that's found specifically in one of the islands in Greece. And it has this very kind of minty, um, minty, minty, minty aroma to it, but kind of minty, but in a different way. It's very interesting. Mmm, wow. Mmm, it cleans the insides. Ooh. Oh, wow. It goes down way easier than the rum. Ooh. Ooh. Someone asked me what great desserts are in Athens. You'll learn about Athens uh, desserts in episode two. Uh, off the top of my head, my favorite dessert personally is kataf kat kataifi. kataifi. I always had a, pr a tough time pronouncing that one. Kataifi, I think it's called. If anyone can... Um, uh, tell me. Carmen says, is it mint infused? No, it's um, it's uh, made with mastica. And mint would, might not be the best word. Someone said it right. This is more, it has more of a licorice flavor. Licorice. So it's very licorice. Woo. I need some, um. Adam says, I'm having a liquid death right now, which is uh, sparkling water. Cool. It tastes like absinthe? Yes. Yeah, it has a similar taste to absinthe. Uh, weaker than absinthe, but yes. 
So Anthony, Anthony left a great um, super comment. Thank you so much, Anthony, for the super chat. Anthony is so kind. Uh, round of hearts to Anthony for a $10 super chat. Anthony says, could you see yourself producing this kind of documentary for HBO or the Travel Channel or even PBS? Or do you think YouTube allows you full creative direction? I will continue doing YouTube regardless. And I will not get in myself in a deal where a streaming service or a production company wants to take creative control of my YouTube or ask me to not make YouTube. Uh, I would not do that. So if I can find an opportunity to make a TV show for a HBO, a BBC, a travel channel, um, a Netflix, and uh, they allow me to just continue still doing my YouTube, yes, I 100% would. I, I definitely do see myself producing and uh, being on camera for and hosting, produce, uh, directing and hosting a documentary series uh, similar to this. And, uh, but the cool thing about YouTube is that I have full creative control. I would love to work with a big company. I don't need the full creative control. I still have my YouTube. You know, it, whenever I have want full creative control, I'll just continue doing YouTube. But I, I do see the opportunity to make TV because TVA the budgets are way higher. The the, the there's more it makes more financial sense at least in the immediate um, immediate time to do something with TV in terms of budgets because the budgets are way higher. Albert says not BBC or but PBS, so I would not do a PBS. Because PBS has zero budget. Uh, BBC does have a budget. I would not do it PBS. A, PBS is way more stricter. So they wouldn't cover more of the grittier parts of history, I don't think. And then uh, B, um, you have if you want to make a show on PBS, you're the one who has to pay for it. If I'm going to pay for my own show, I'm going to put it on YouTube. Like I did with this one. I'm not going to put it on the PBS. Um, so PBS, I, I, I just it, it's not my vibe. I really deeply appreciate Rick Steves and Diane Cochilas who um, do shows on PBS. But, and I, I really like Rick Burns' documentary in New York, which was done on PBS many years ago. And Ken Burns also is a great documentarian. But, um... Their styles are very different from mine, and I just cannot envision myself doing a PBS style show. And also, I don't see the value of me paying for it and putting it on PBS. I'd rather just put it on YouTube in that case. So, the reason I would want to do a show with a big company is to have a budget. And a bigger budget, I can do a location that would be way more difficult for me to do on my own with a smaller team. You know, um, Athens is fairly easy. It's a, it's a big city in Europe. Uh, it's, it's easy to stay. Uh, it's fairly easy to film. Most locations didn't care that we were filming. They just allowed us to film in their restaurant or cafe. Um, you know, we couldn't go, uh, into the cultural institutions, but we filmed them from the outside. So we, it was very easy to film in Athens. But I think uh, having a big budget could allow me to film something uh, in a more expensive country that's a bit more sh different from what I'm used to, like a Japan or Singapore or Indonesia or the interior of China <laughs> or um, parts of India, maybe uh, one of the countries in South America. There's a lot of cool places I think I can go with a, with a nicer budget. Hulu, who? Yeah, yeah, definitely will work with Hulu. They're all uh, they're all the same company nowadays. Hulu is owned, I think, by Disney. Let's 
So Yamas, Yamas 2, making a documentary series. I do hope you enjoy it. I'll stick around for 15 more minutes, but I really do hope you enjoy uh, the documentary series. The first episode is appearing at 7 p.m. I'll be live on the chat at 7 p.m. Uh, so thank you, thank you everyone so much um, for coming on and, and saying hello. Have you tried Istanbul? Istanbul is a place I would love to cover. So Istanbul is, um, is a place where I need a bit more time. Uh, I would need a bit, a bit of a bigger budget. Um, because I don't know the language. I would have to use a translator. Uh, some Turkish people know English, but not everyone. So in order to do these type of, these type of um, interviews, it would take having um, more, a longer time because I would have to um, learn the language or have someone to translate for me. Sorry, my nose is stuffy. I'm going to grab a tissue. People say nothing beats Europe. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad people enjoy Europe. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so glad you enjoy Europe. Um, Daniel says, I already miss Ariel in Europe. Oh. Susie says, cook us a steak. Oh, how I would love a steak right now. I don't have steak in my apartment. Start your own Latino production, says Sabi. And then uh, Inspire Life asked earlier, did I plan my, my interviews? Did I uh, prepare for them and, and prepare questions? No, no. I did not plan my interviews. Uh, Maria actually asked me the same exact question while we were filming. And she was shocked that I did not do too much preparation. And she asked me, was I nervous for the interviews? Generally, no, I was not nervous for the interviews. Um, just because it was already topics I enjoy it was a culture that I already connected with, uh, being Athens. And then later on, the same thing applied to Edinburgh and Scotland. And, um, and I'd rather not have questions prepared. I'd rather know my stuff about the person, so I'll read into them. I would, um, I would uh, look, look into their biography, what they have done, what they have made. Uh, I would check out their arts or their music or their uh, books or whatnot. And then I would um, research about the topic on hand. So when I was going to interview the, a professor of architecture in one of the major universities in Greece, I, um, I, I learned everything I could about the architecture of Athens, just so I know what to talk to him about. So... Um, and then by not planning questions, I think we have better conversations. You know, I took certain lessons that I got from my YouTube, uh, from my live streams, and put it into documentary filmmaking, which is to not over plan, to not plan <laughs> in general. Uh, I think uh, the spontaneity... Adriana says, you are very spontaneous. It's part of your natural personality. It is. It's part of my natural personality. Uh, the spontaneity is what gives me life and makes my videos interesting. And I prefer the spontaneity as opposed to scripting and planning. And um, it gets trickier when it's something as complicated as a series like this, but... We found a way to maintain spontaneity despite having, uh, finding people to interview, sitting down for these interviews, um, starting to find the story and the general places that we had to film in. But aside from that, we, we had spontaneity within the conversation editor. Thank you so much. 
Wilma, nice to see you here from the Netherlands. Welcome. But this is a great talent. I know a lot of people who stick to the agenda too much. Yes. Yes, which is not my... My... My forte. Hey! Is there buffering? If you had to hire an actor to be the presenter of your documentaries, who would it be? Inkspire Life, you know, um, I, 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 would, I, would, I would do it myself. Uh, I would not want to hire someone uh, to do a documentary I'm doing. A movie, yes. Not a documentary. Um, generally, I would be more interested in making documentaries where I am presenting them. Um, the reason for that is, it's just because I simply enjoy doing it. You know, I enjoy being in front of the camera and, um, and sure if I'm hired and someone wants me to make something where someone else is in front of the camera, you know, I, I may consider it, but in general, if I'm doing it for me, uh, I'd rather be on camera. So... So that, so no, I wouldn't have an actor in mind to take my place. Uh, I do have, like, I would love a cinematographer, for sure. Um, you know, Maria was a great uh, videographer, but it, it's awesome when you have even more purposeful cinematography in your, in your documentary. So I would love to have a cinematographer. I would love to have... You know, someone who, who, um, lighting, lighting would be awesome. A cinematographer and lighting, you know, someone who really knows how to make really compelling shots, very purposeful, very intentional. This is not what we intended to do with, with the Athens Urbanus. Athens Urbanus was shot very run and gun, very fast paced, very documentary style. But I would love to work with a cinematographer and with a light uh, person who's very expert in lighting to just make these beautiful shots. And if I can combine kind of very beautiful, purposeful shots that are planned in combination with my spontaneous style, I think that could really be rather beautiful. Hey, Patrick says, are you going to make content for your exclusive members here on YouTube? Yes, yes, yes. Um, content is already posted. You, you have at least like two, two, two to four videos per month of content for members on YouTube and also uh, Patreon. Um, so yes, yes. Uh, here for the Athens Urbanist, you'll be getting full interviews. Basically, the full uncut interviews. We interviewed a lot of people. As I mentioned, up to 25 people we interviewed. Um, and you'll be getting like those full-on uncut interviews. Well, you'll learn way more in the, in, the, in the series. We were not able to include the full hour of an interview with someone. We only included maybe 10 minutes maximum. So you'll be getting way more content. And then you'll be still continue to get more uh, full bonus uh, videos from the other short videos that I do as well. Lois says, having caught you in live so long. Hey, Lois, thank you so much for tuning in. Mika says, I just got the notification for the Athens documentary. Ooh, we're getting close. It's 6.30. And Ms. Love says, a director's cut? There won't be a director's cut, though I was tempted to do a director's commentary let me know if people would be interested in that um but we're getting close 30 minutes away for the athens urbanist show oh my god it's it's, it's happening it is happening i am super hyped ladies and gentlemen thank you so much 
Uh, wow, this is awesome. Oh yeah, people are already waiting in the chat. This is awesome. I see it here on my laptop. Wonderful, wonderful. All right. Susie says, why am I nervous for you? I don't know, Susie. Why are you nervous? I'm nervous. Why are you nervous, Susie? Diane says, enjoy everything you posted. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm nervous because I um I spend I spend quite a bit of money uh to make this. Uh but beyond the money, it's um a lot of time and effort. A lot of time. Months. And it wasn't just me, as I mentioned, my team, months in making this. And, and I could, I could be very, I could be like most, like uh, some artists would say, oh, you know, I do the art just for me. You know, that's easy to say if you like are painting something <laughs> or you're drawing or you're writing a poem, but you know, when it comes to such a big project like this, where it's not just me, it's other people who have poured their heart and energy into it and long, long hours, there's a lot of pressure, uh, to make, ha have this be seen ultimately, you know, I, I want this to be seen. And I want to entertain, simply. And I hope people see it. That's the, you know, they say that the journey is the most important thing. And it is. It is. But, oh, I, I really want people to see it. You know, that I, I want people to be entertained by it. You know, that's the most, that's the top priority. And since I poured my money into it, um... You know, it's a worthy investment. It's a worthy spend. Uh, but it would be nice to make my money back. <laughs> it would be really nice to make my money back, to, to be honest. Uh, because, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's something that I don't know if I can... If, if I don't get bigger opportunities, I don't know if I can uh, afford to do much more. So crossing fingers that Athens and Edinburgh does well. Because otherwise, you know, I don't know what to do. That, that's why, Susie, you might be nervous for me. I'm nervous for myself. Inkspire Life says you should have uh, featured it with, along with your new GB movie. What's the GB movie? What are you referring to? Inspire Life. And, um, and I'm also working on the coffee documentary about New York City as well. And you know, the, um, the tricky thing with these uh, online platforms is uh, they're tough. Uh, they they um, are, you know, they're emphasizing a lot of short videos. So long videos don't always do too well. So crossing fingers. I also did the Christmas documentary as well. Hey, Marit says, I have my Zorba on my radio playing low volume. And guess what's playing? The Zorba's Dance. Uh, Mikis Theodorakis. Oh, yeah. That is great. I really do hope you uh, enjoy it. Episode 5, I'll be going into the history of why that song is very popular and what made another specific genre of music, the Bentico, very popular. So stay tuned for episode 5. We're going to go into Greek music, which is exciting. John says, how many episodes? Six episodes. The first episode is airing today and it'll be every Thursday at 7 p.m. for the next six weeks. L.A. says, I watched both docs. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad. 
Diaz says, are you back in America? I am. Savvy says, you have fun making it. I did. Uh, Food says, uh, what was the most difficult part of filming this documentary? Most difficult part of filming this documentary was not knowing if I was going to get people. I'm not from Greece. Uh, I'm not from Athens. Uh, I don't know the Greek language. I didn't know if I would get people to interview. And I was really nervous that first day of filming, which you can see that on YouTube. I posted a vlog about that first day of filming. Uh, So I was very nervous about that first day of filming. My videographer editor is Greek, but she is not from Athens either. So we kind of were in uncharted territory. And, um, and I told her that first day is like, you know, I don't know if we're going to have enough to film, to make a documentary, but what we're going to do is film it like a vlog and edit it like a documentary. Luckily that was not fully necessary because, um, we did have that, still that spontaneity in filming. But we got so many interviews, so many people came out, so many interesting folks, um, a lot of interesting musicians uh, came out, and we ended up making something really beautiful. And then with Edinburgh, Edinburgh, it was a smooth process, and I'm so excited to uh, release Edinburgh in the summertime, The Edinburgh Urbanist, which will be season two of this series. And Edinburgh, it was in the it happened in a different way. I just emailed a lot of cultural institutions like two weeks before, three weeks before, and a lot of them said yes. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, come. Come. Um and that was amazing. Ariel, where are you now? I'm in the I'm in America. <laughs> I'm in America. I'm in New York. Mika, nice to see you here. And here's the poster. There we go. That's the poster. Right here. Someone left the super chat. Hey, Mr. Dave Pizza with the $10 super chat says, uh, good luck. So where do we watch the first Athens episode? It's coming out here on YouTube. And, um... Check it out right now. It's it's popping up in 20 minutes. In 20 whole minutes. <clears throat> Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me know. Are you ready? So, I'm super excited. I've got a bunch of cousins in Edinburgh, says Todd, carrying swords when you go out drinking. No joke. Look forward to seeing the doc. Oh, yeah. That's coming out in summer. Stay tuned. Uh, Where do we get autographed posters? Oh. Ooh. Should I I make prints of my posters? If you really want an autographed poster, I I would love to find a way to do it. Uh, Anthony says, do you have a PayPal? I do have a PayPal, Anthony. Let me uh, put it up right now. PayPal.me slash Ariel Vieira. Right here. Love the album cover, says uh, Adam. Thank you so much, Adam. I appreciate that. Susie says, popcorn is not Greek. You know, I did not feel like having a big spinach pie <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I wish there were a uh, uh, more Greek thing to eat fast. Hmm. Wow. That's amazing. Tabby says, I wish I had a gyro. Yeah, a yido would be nice. Susie says, I bought myself pita chips and hummus. Ooh, that's a, that's a great, great idea. Great idea. I commend you. 
So if you want to see uh, bonus content, I'll be starting to post next week, patreon.com slash urbanist. Full bonus content. You'll be seeing many interesting interviews. The full interviews will be posted on patreon.com slash urbanist, along with my regular bonus content, which is extended cuts of my short videos. Some short videos are only like three minutes long or, or two minutes long, but the full cut was about 40 minutes. Murphy says, fess up, where's your next location? Ah, you know, I want to go to Japan. I want to go to Japan. Uh, I really want to go to Japan. Please take me to Japan, like right now. Hey, Mighty Bull with the $2 super chat. Says, good luck, Ariel, for the hard work. Hey, man, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Ooh, we got 15 minutes. Okay. 15 minutes. Woo, 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 woo. Pythagorean says, hummus is not great. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Let's, um, let's not ruin people's fun. <laughs> hey, would you do a small screening premiere someday? Um, For a big thing, yes. Not, not for a small thing. So for a movie, yes. Or, or a very big epic documentary, yeah. Ooh, so excited. All right, we're getting close. We're getting close. Uh, Marie says, okay, I see the cheeks getting red. I am excited, excited, excited. Let's, uh, let's play the theme song one more time. The Athenian urbanism. Let me know if you're hyped. We only have a few more minutes left. 15 minutes left. I'm going to play it right now. This is the score of the Athens urbanists. It doesn't appear in the first episode, but it does appear in episode two through six. Watch, listen to this after the episode airs. Uh, it's Athenian Urbanism, and it's by No Clear Mind. No. Oh my god. Hey, Expired Life is so hyped. Adam is I hyped. Nicole says, come back to Europe. I would love to go back to Europe. I definitely want to go back to Europe. I spent $50 today on the groceries to make breakfast. A very simple breakfast. $50. I need to go back to Europe. It's cheaper to stay in Europe. Nina says, mellow music. Hope the new album is on Spotify. Yes, it is. Athenian Urbanism. It's just a song. But it worked well as a score. And yes, it's available on Spotify. I'll be posting, uh, let me know if you want a Spotify playlist of the, of the score that we have. The, all the soundtrack. Because uh, we use um, music from a few Greek musicians. Hermes, Logout, Pan Pan, and Ayemba. Um, they're all amazing, amazing music. So cheers. Marie says, we will adopt you, Ariel. You belong here. Oh, man, I appreciate that. I never forgot uh, the musician you fil filmed in Hania Crete at the harbor. That was so beautiful, so Marie. Oh, yeah, Marie. Yeah, we've encountered so many great, amazing musicians. Are you drinking Uzo, says Pythagorean. I am drinking Uzo. Susie says, is it available on Amazon? I don't think so, unfortunately. I don't think he uploaded it to Amazon. Maybe. Maybe, but I'm not 100% sure. A playlist would be great, says Marianne. Okay, all right. So stay tuned. Oh. Everyone, a mere 10 minutes is left. Thank you so much for tuning in. Right now, go to the premiere. Go to the premiere. Uh, it's on my YouTube. Click the link. I'll put the link right now. 
so you know exactly where to tune in. Um, but do watch the premiere right now so you can see the Athens Urbanist in the mere 10 minutes. Grab your popcorn and uh, do, do me a solid to help the YouTube algorithm um, post a comment after the video is done. So after the video, after the video is done, I'll, aside from the live chat, write a comment in uh, on the video. Write a comment and write what you enjoyed about it. Let me know what you enjoyed about it. About it. Let me know what you're looking forward to seeing in Athens. Uh, thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being such a awesome audience. I hope you're entertained. I hope you love this uh, look into Athens and transports you to a different city um, and takes you on a journey that is more than many uh, TV shows out there to show you something a little bit more immersive uh, in the city. I hope you really feel like you got to know a city that you probably wouldn't have thought you needed to know. You know, a lot of people want to know Paris, they want to know London, they want to know New York, but Athens doesn't always get the the top recognition. And I want to do this with other cities that don't get the top recognition. Uh, uh, Edinburgh, uh, Helsinki, a, Bar uh, a Sevilla in Spain, uh, Tenerife in the Canary Islands, uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico, a Guadalajara in Mexico. Who knows what I'll do? A, Ho a Hokkaido in, uh, in, in Japan. There's so many options to show you cities that you typically wouldn't see in the big, big TV shows. So thank you everyone so much for tuning in. One more time, yamas, and I'll see you on the live premiere. Grab your popcorn, have a good day everyone. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Ah, oh, so excited. Stay curious my friends. Bye-bye.